But uh, for now, why don't we talk about another company that's kind of making these big moves out of nowhere, uh, PlayStation announced that they bought Evo, you know, the the world's biggest, I feel, fighting game mm-hmm. competition um, that's out there. And this, I don't know for you guys, when you guys heard the news, this kind of comes out of left field. I was not expecting it. Of course, PlayStation has made like a bit of headlines the same week. They announced um, Haven Studios mm-hmm. with Jade Raymond. They announced, they gave us a look at PlayStation 5 VR. And then this, which I, again, came out of left field. I didn't expect. A lot of people are talking in the fighting game community as to what this means for Evo. Of course, Evo has had a a couple tough years. There was um, lots of controversy in the community over an employee that was working for Evo, as well as obviously being online uh, with the pandemic and dealing with all that stuff. So I wanna get your take on what this news means for First, let's talk about Evo. What this news means for Evo. Um, and were you guys shocked by this I news? I definitely didn't see this coming. I didn't, I mean, I'm not necessarily, not necessarily saying I'm shocked, but I definitely, I did not see an acquisition in Evo from PlayStation coming. It does make sense though. And I'll say this much. Uh, yeah. I've, I've only really, like when it comes to truly like looking deep into and paying attention to the scene in the FGC, I'm very much involved in NetherRealm scene. Mm -hmm. And I know what's going on there. And I know pretty much for the entire run of NetherRealm scene, people have been playing on PlayStation. Um, At least more more specifically, more recently, since like Mortal Kombat X, Injustice 2, Mortal Kombat 11. Um, Since for so for like the last six or so years, people have been playing on PlayStation. Uh, And I think it's been fairly similar for other games as well. Um, And so it makes sense that, uh, and I think as well, you even have a game like Street Fighter is, is exclusive. It is PlayStation, yeah. right? Yep. Um, so this this makes sense from that standpoint. I just ne- I just wouldn't have guessed that PlayStation was going to acquire Evo, and I mean it means nothing but good things because PlayStation is just this endless money pit <laughs> at this point, and so I'm sure that they want to invest some of that into Evo, into the tournament, um, and we're hopefully getting towards a post COVID world. So to see some of those tournaments, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. fingers crossed. Uh, fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, so if we get to that point and people can start going out to these locals again and start going out to these tournaments again, then it'll be interesting to see what PlayStation wants to do with the venue, with how they want to run these tournaments, with what they're going to do in general mm-hmm. to benefit Evo. Because I think this will do nothing but benefit for Evo and the tournament. Mm-hmm. I don't know if people see it differently. I I agree with you. Um, I feel like this couldn't come at a better time, especially for a tournament that has this legacy, but then also is dealing with like recovering from all that controversy, recovering from an online tournament they had to cancel, right? Um, It's like the perfect time. Uh, But Malik, go ahead, you were about to say something. Um, So I I kinda have, this is less on Evo and more on PlayStation, Uh, Mm. kinda kinda three big points, right? One, PlayStation needed another huge esport after they lost call of duty yeah Uh, second evo and this is more related to evo evo needs more structure and professionalism like a a more professional appeal in a way that other mainstream esports have they can that's that's kind of necessary to eliminate not only some of the controversy but to validate it in a world where mainstream media coverage is going to be everything and then kind of the third last point is that not so much that this shocked me, but PlayStation has done a really good job of helping underrated esports communities. Brawlhalla, Madden, 2K, they have really helped Call of Duty get off its feet at a time where it wasn't proficient on PC and CSGO was slaughtering it. This is this is kind of normal with PlayStation. They, they've done this a lot. And while I didn't see them acquiring Evo, I knew that they were going to have to acquire something. I think that PlayStation can add a lot of, uh, like, quality to Evo in the production uh, and kind of going forward, offer some big prize pools and put it up there and get it the viewership that it really deserves. I don't watch a lot of fighting, um, but I have heard a lot about Evo. And I understand from my point of view is that it's kind of like this underground tight knit community. Um, Mm -hmm. But 
I would like to see fighting games finally start to get some mainstream recognition. And I think PlayStation acquiring them is the move for it. I, I am all for that as well. I want to see the FGC. I, I don't think the FGC is necessarily like underground, but it certainly hasn't reached the levels that even a game that's as recent as Valorant has on an esports level, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, and I would love to see, you know, whether it's, of course, for my own self, because I'm in the NRS scene, I would love to see like Mortal Kombat tournaments reach that level. Um, and we have, there's there's people like we play who are running massive tournaments through Mortal Kombat 11, which is awesome and putting up some huge prize pools for it, which is great. But I would love to see PlayStation uh, just put a big push on the FGC because fighting games are fun to watch. They I are. love watching esports yeah. in general. And so oh, easy yeah. for anyone to get exactly. into fighting games. Like, you know what's happening. It's kind of like very similar to watching a sports game. You know, to put yep. the ball in the net, you know, to kick one other exactly. opponent's like, butt yeah. Yeah. till they KO, right? It's very easy exactly. to translate. Um, but Steve, I want to know like what you think about the tournament and then maybe we'll get more into like the sure. PlayStation talk. Well, um, well, that's, just, well, that's yeah. the thing is like, no, 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 I'm it's okay. Far from an authority to, to talk about this. This is why like, I, I love to defer to you, you guys' opinion because you guys are so much more ingrained in the FGC. And while I respect like what Evo does and for the FGC itself, I'm just not as much in tune with it as, as you guys are. But I will say though, that my, my one big hope is that, you know, this is more of a play for Sony to help with like advertising, get people's eyes on from the mainstream on this. And not so much to change things. Cause I think that for the most part, what Evo does for the community is pretty positive outside you know the controversy the the obvious stuff there um but i hope that this isn't just a play to like change and manipulate the whole scene itself i, I mm -hmm. would really rather sony not do that but uh time will only tell i guess we don't really have confirmation on how much of an extent their their voice will be in this change mm. And but you're absolutely right. That's a huge concern because what makes the FGC so special is mm -hmm. that it's grassroots, right? It, you, it's so welcoming. It's so down to earth. Um, I would say one of the most down to earth uh, esports communities yeah. out there because it's so grassroots. Um, so you know, anytime you have a huge acquisition with um, a huge company like PlayStation, you have to worry that corporate may get a, mm. in the way of you know the tournament. And you know, Malik. You brought up the point like you need that professionalism and at first i was like no because you know that's that's kind of what makes the fgc great is that yes they there are professionals in the fgc right like you have commentators that made yeah. names for themselves that carry themselves very professionally they have brand deals they know what how to do business right um but when you go to the tournaments it, it's just like you feel like you're just at a local every or something time, like a big tournament every you time that's cool. right so so it'll be interesting to see how they're able to keep the feel of grassroots while you know obviously putting money and hopefully they put good money to these prize pools to how tournaments yeah. are carried out and corporate kind kind of understands the community but like you said Malik uh, PlayStation knows fighting games. Yeah. Street Fighter, you know, like the the biggest and oldest. Um, uh, I feel pairings is Street Fighter and PlayStation, right? Um, so I, I I have confidence in this. I want to bring up something though, and Mies in chat kind of brought this up, wondering what this means for fighting games that aren't oh, exclusive right. to PlayStation, right? There's a I don't think necessarily, you know, PlayStation will eventually have an Evo where it's just PlayStation games. However, they probably will feel more inclined to have games that are exclusive to PlayStation and maybe PC um, to those tournaments. So something like right. Smash, what does that mean? They didn't really comment specifically on Smash, but they did say that uh, the Evo organizers did say that this doesn't mean like it's PlayStation mm. exclusive. They're going to have um, Mortal Kombat. They're going to have um, Eunice, Street Fighter. Uh, so there's going to have some games that are like really PlayStation and PC. Um, I don't know how many Xbox well, fighting games say, there are. I was going to say, really, wrong, you know what I mean? Supposed to make a comeback yeah. this year? I well, think hopefully I think they are right. having I think they are having a killer instincts as well. Um, but who knows what that means for the long term of that relationship. I was watching uh, Hungrybox and he was commenting on 
you know, this news. And as he was streaming, Nintendo put out oh. a response. Oh, I didn't see that. And pretty much Nintendo was kind of saying they're always looking at all options with Evo and other tournaments um, in terms of how to carry out Smash tournaments. And we know that there's obviously this complicated relationship between Nintendo and the Smash community, whether it is Melee or Ultimate. Um, but Hbox pretty much said he's not too hopeful in Evo represent or Smash repre represented yeah. at Evo because of the yeah. Nintendo side. That um, so what do you guys think on that? Like PlayStation exclusives, will we, what will happen to Smash? That, that is definitely the topic of, or the, the main question here that I didn't even realize until it was brought up. And, and I think Misa is also right in the chat saying the rawness of the FGC is what makes it so great. And I agree in general that mm -hmm. yes, I don't want to lose the, the authenticity that the FGC has in this feeling of being so tight knit, feeling like a close family, everyone kind of knowing everyone type of thing. But at the same time, like, Everyone in the FGC, like especially what I see in the NRS scene, they're so excited about these guys we play coming in, running these massive Mortal Kombat tournaments, putting up fifty, sixty thousand dollars in the prize pool because it's something that we didn't really get ever. Um, and so mm -hmm. yeah. the FGC wants that kind of stuff. They want that kind of support. It just obviously comes as like a blessing and a curse. And now I do wonder what happens with PlayStation, Act, like getting the acquisition on Evo. What happens to a game like Smash? What happens even to like a community run Smash Melee tournament? Are they going to be blocked from doing that at all? Because Nintendo in general was trying to block that themselves. And so if Sony owns Evo, mm. are they gonna be like, uh, no, you can't do that. I wonder what's gonna happen to mm. tournaments like that. Because a part of what makes Evo fun as well is, yes, you have the officially sanctioned stuff like Mortal Kombat, Smash Ultimate, Dragon Ball Fighters, like all that stuff is run officially um, and is a part of the like main lineup of games. But then, you know, you have these little side tournaments. People run a tournament for Smash Melee that's all pretty much like community built and stuff. So does that go away? Do we lose that? I wonder what happens to little tournaments like that. And that starts to become a bit of a worry for me now when I think about this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would hate I, for that to happen mm -hmm. only because, you know, like, the FGC is built around just the community itself. I would hate to get to a point where like the console wars start to flow into it. It's like, okay, well, it's just Sony things. Sony's the best, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Nintendo's out of here. Xbox is out of here and stuff like that. Like, don't worry about all that stuff. Just keep it the way it is. Keep it thriving. And because let's be honest here, like Street Fighter V has been going on for so long. That's really the only thing that Sony has under its belt. I mean, unless they do like All-Stars Battle Royale 2, I mean, how much how much longer can they just say tout the Street Fighter over and over again? They're gonna have to invite everything to let that to let Evo breathe and grow over time. Mm -hmm. They with a lot of their like communities too, especially with Madden, they spend a lot of money simply just donating prize pools and helping these small little like uh, community run uh, tournaments like get up and going and get the production and get that help that they need. Now that you mentioned Nintendo, I am worried, but I think about something like the PlayStation experience where they included mm -hmm. um, some of the older PlayStation one games, but in arcade cabinets and custom arcade cabinets. I'm not sure if you guys like remember yep. that. It was a long time ago. Doing something like that for Evo where there's like little sections, right? For games and kind of providing a place where people can, just kind of gravitate to whatever uh, is for them is going to be super important. But like I said, I'm not super familiar with, you know, Evo as a whole fighting game community. I just think that that is going to be super scary for the Smash community with how little support they've been getting from Nintendo and how little support they may get now. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, you know, that's a good idea, I think, for when you have in-person events to like have cabinets and areas where people could kind of gather. But you still want and especially for like the Smash community, you still want, you know, that um, investment into the community, investment to hold these grand tournaments. Um, and, you know, I feel like for Smash in particular, 
it really, their relationship with Evo will really depend on Nintendo and where Nintendo thinks the Smash or thinks they want to invest in the Smash community. I think that will be more of, you know, the discussions there. I feel like PlayStation, especially because Smash is so, it's like a yeah. staple of Evo. Obvi- obviously, like the <laughs> last couple of years, they've had their issues, but, um, you know, to bring it back, you really need that support of Nintendo. And I think that's where the Smash community kind of needs to really, um, you know, if they want to be at Evo, that's kind of the pressure they need to put on the publisher. And it's that same complicated relationship. Uh, but for, for PlayStation, let's, let's talk about PlayStation Mm. for a bit. We've, we've talked about how they've had this relationship with fighting games, but where do we see PlayStation in terms of their investment of esports? Like I know Malik, you mentioned they lost Call of Duty, obviously, um, now that the uh, league moved to PC. Um, but where do you think the the like uh, PlayStation will go in terms of developing Evo further? Well, it'll be interesting as well with Riot's fighting games. Right. We'll always see that oh, yeah. at Evo, right? Like, um, so I feel like we're gonna have to watch this news mm-hmm. as we get, you know, more news on Killer Instincts as well <laughs> as Riot's fighting games. And especially, I, I really do feel it for the Smash community. Um, I know a few people there and th- they just want to have that presence, you know? Um, I really hope they get it, but I I don't think that's necessarily going to happen for Evo in the future.